am Levita Savangu Clayton. I've just opened my first solo show here at Gasworks. Um, and the title of the show is Quantum Ghost. Quantum Ghost is a poetic lament to memory. It's a 21 minute sound work that exists as a loop and also a series of photograms. And it's a manifestation of a kind of subterranean energy. I was on residency here at Gasworks last summer um, and it kind of formed a lot of my research and thinking around this idea of a sonic archive um, and it was yeah a real time to kind of turn that studio space into a lab so two of my collaborators Joel Thompson and Demelza Toy Toy actually came through the studio and we did some jamming sessions where we kind of tested these field recordings and yeah we first all met in that room really so it was very seminal from that point of view. My relationship with mining is very much I suppose looking at my ancestry. Um, so my father actually came to Britain to study mining engineering uh, and that was the years of exile when he was here so he was part of SWAPO which was um, a liberation movement it was the war of independence from South African apartheid rule um, and he was dur here during the 1980s so quite a seminal time really if we're thinking about mining as well um, and then my mother uh, she lives in Cornwall on that side of the family they're Cornish you know there's there's a heritage there very much in the landscape and also in our own family tree yeah I was very interested in the many um, ideas around the archive. So the living archive, the inherited archive, um, and kind of following this paper trail that I've been left behind, which um, connects me to my father. And um, that took me to Namibia, and straight away I went into the National um, Archives of Namibia and just searched the word mining and then went through every image in the, in the archive. And through that process, I started to build a narrative around um, what that sounded like in those photos, these very colonial, hard, um, black and white images, um, what that felt like, and started to build a kind of sonic archive that was very research-led, very focused. Um, and then also this um, idea of the archive being in resistance to. So this kind of dormancy of the materials that I was finding in these spaces, that they were lying there, they were resting, and then exposing them to air, you know, they're breathing and they come to life. So how could I embody, um, how could the show embody something of life around the archive? I think the thing about having a first solo show means that I could really go to those edges of um, owning the space, you know, without compromise. So you go into this world that's like an inner world, it's like an inner ear almost, or a mouth. Um, but also at the same time, it's clearly a cave. So it's this cob housing material that is this dried out kind of clay thing. And you walk in and you're transformed. So the idea is that your body walks over gravel, these kind of tons of granite gravel that's on the floor. And you're affecting the sound in that space. And also it's so dark, there's just this red light. So um, there's, 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 there's a, quite a dramatic experience that's around transformation, around a kind of sacred space where you listen and you're held. So the sound work that's in the exhibition, um, there's 21 minutes, which is in reference to generally how long my performances last, which are 20 minutes. Um, it's this loop and it embodies everything of the last 12 months and more and it's this thing that I'm describing as a poetic lament to memory and by that it's trying to collage this um, this experience of holding or thinking of a memory and in terms of the sounds that are actually in there it's something between uh, the tactile nature of touching materials in the archives of paper of um, being in those dark rooms, in those spaces, and also this huge, at the other end of the scale, we've got this sub, which is below 40 hertz. Um, so that was with Joel Thompson, who collaborated with me on that. And it's the sound of uranium decaying. So it's kind of just before it turns to lead. So it's this deep throb, and it holds the whole environment in that space. So you feel it, 
maybe rather than hearing it, you feel it. That was very important to have this sense of feeling. Um, so that's the, the huge um, conversation around the, the incomprehensible nature of memory and of time. And then you have these very intimate sounds that I worked with Demalza Toy Toy on. So she's my collaborator there. And, and that was kind of turning these field recordings of sounds from Namibia and Cornwall. And you'll hear these, these moments, you'll catch these moments which are kind of metallic or sound like wind, uh, sound like earth, but they're very gentle and they're very um, intricate. And within that, it's kind of all embodied or held together by this skeleton that is a vocal part. And this vocal part is a, an othered voice. So it's somewhere between, it's, it's a hybrid and it's a, a kind of broken poem. So you'll hear words um, and you'll catch things, but it's very embedded into this whole swell of sound. And the thing that really holds this resonance beyond that, that kind of gets you here again, is Hannah Catherine Jones, so her vocal part. So we collaborated on this more classical reference to a lament and the cyclical nature of it. And what are the notes and what are the harmonies that kind of hold grief and healing at the same time? The photograms when you come in through the door um, are really the, the simple and clear poetic around everything that I'm saying. They hold light. I love this sense of the minerals um, holding or transmitting something of a soul. And everything around the way that they were created was very intricate, very bodily. They're so big that I really had to throw the materials onto there. I had to reach to the edges to create this space for them to exist and to breathe. Um, and I think they, they, they're clearly doing something around experiencing energy and translating that and I see them and read them as a series of scores so actually they completely ground the sonic um, work that you experience in the other room they come from that and there's something around the oral to the oral and the scene and what isn't seen um, and I just love the two being in conversation you know the sonic archive and then this visual thing of a photogram